statistical statistics saying that Gary Jacobs simply doesn't have the stuff to fight with a man like Pernell Whitaker. Larry? But Jacobs is one of the most supremely fit fighters I think I've ever seen. He says he can run a mile in four minutes. If he can do it in 4.59, I'd consider it remarkable. Bunch stat numbers. And they tell a story as well in his last three championship fights. Uh, Whitaker has been quite remarkable in terms of his activity and accuracy. Uh, Jacobs is not in that kind of a lead. And that's reflected especially in the jabs. Jacobs uses it as a radar. For Whitaker, it's a real weapon that sets up everything he does. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Pernell Whitaker Gary Jacobs fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing gate count, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold, and there's a Scottish bagpipe playing somewhere in the building now as this man, Gary Jacobs of Glasgow, Scotland, prepares to make his entrance into the ring. On March 4, he fought Jose Fernandez, a club fighter, journeyman from the Bronx, won a 10-round decision here and impressed no one at ringside, though he cut his hand badly during that fight. He says early in the fight and had to fight most of the rounds with a cut on his hand that ultimately required seven stitches between the knuckles. They're playing Scotland the Brave. There were some rumors that they might play Hatikva, the Israeli <laughs> national anthem, because Jacobs is a rare Jewish fighter. Remarkably little has been made of that. I haven't seen a single promotional release that uh, remarked on that, which is sort of unusual. Yeah, the subject arouses so little discussion that he said he was one of the three best Jewish fighters in the world and then couldn't name the other two. But there's the record, 41 wins, five losses, 23 KOs, not a power puncher. Waited a long time to get this title shot. He just passed his manager, Mickey Duff, who himself, as the son of a rabbi, was a fighter. Hi. And we get ready for Brunel Whitaker to enter the ring. And uh, here are a few of Whitaker's distinctions. You can see that he's won 83% of the rounds in his 16 championship fights. We've already mentioned he's one of four fighters to win titles in four different weight classes, the others being Leonard Duran and Hearns. He's fought 12 current or past champions, and there are still some others in the welterweight division for him to focus on down the road if he can get it done tonight. I regard Pernell as sort of one of those rare flowers who blossoms two or three times a year, comes out, everybody has a chance to say how beautiful he is, he disappears and comes back a few months later, Roy. Uh, that's the way you should do it. <laughs> that way they remember the beauty. Saw the record in championship fights, of course the loss to Ramirez was hotly disputed and later avenged. September 1993 draw decision with Julio Cesar Chavez was almost unanimously condemned as a bogus decision. Thirty-five wins, one loss, one draw, only 15 KOs. Last nine title fights have gone the distance. This guy pitches shutouts and now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buck for the brief fight introductions ladies and gentlemen good evening and welcome to Atlantic City's convention hall by way of Bally's Park Place Casino Hotel on the boardwalk here in Atlantic City New Jersey tonight main events presents the featured bout of the evening this contest is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr., WBC Supervisor at Ringside from the USA, Bob Bussey. The three judges assigned to score this bout on a 10-point must system are Tokeyaki Kanaya from Japan, Gus Mercurio from Australia, and from Hawaii in the USA, Tamototsu Tamahara, and when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee from the United States, Mr. Ron Lipton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 
by way of Bally's Park Place, Hotel and Casino on the boardwalk in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Twelve rounds of boxing for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing purple trimmed with gold and black, and weighing in at 147 pounds. He comes to us from Glasgow, Scotland, with a professional record of 41 victories, 23 by KO against five defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the number one ranked challenger in the world, Gary Kidd And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black, trimmed with red, and weighing in also at 147 pounds. This 1984 Olympic gold medal champion is one of only four fighters in boxing history to win four titles in four weight divisions. And he's considered by many to be, pound for pound, the best in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting from Norfolk, Virginia, the four-time champion of the world and reigning welterweight champion of the world, Burnell Sweet Pea Whitaker. This is you, baby. This is you. Just the chief second. Just the chief second. Pete and the chief second. Gentlemen, I've given you the rules of the World Boxing Council. I remind you now, there is no standing eight count. If either fighter is in trouble and you do not want me to stop this bout, you must show me clearly that you can and want to continue. If you score a knockdown, be careful with the follow-up punches. Do not hit a man on the deck or you risk disqualification. On the champion's trunks, I'm calling this low here. On the challenger's trunks, he's wearing them quite high. Right on this mark, I'm considering low. Do you understand? No matter what happens, obey my commands. Good luck to you both. Jim, nine years ago, an unknown welterweight from Britain named Lloyd Hunnigan came here to fight an unbeatable, quotes around unbeatable, Donald Curry, and actually beat him in a monster upset. And that's what the Brits and the Scots are hoping for tonight. Hunnigan out hustled Curry. And Jacobs has promised to do the same to Whitaker. Look your way out, no holding. No holding. <laughs> Keep it clear. Nice professional work. Uppercut by Whitaker. Landed in close. Watch your head. Jacob is smart. This is the type of fight he would try to have with Whitaker all night long. This type of fight, he doesn't get hurt as much, and it allows him to be able to land a few more punches. So you recommend that Jacob stays at close quarters with Brunel? It would be very smart on his part, I think. Brunel is such a slick fighter, until outside, I don't think Jacob really has much of a chance. Jacob's Stop coming in that time right. behind the lead left hand over Don't the top. Back. Statistically, Box. Roy, he doesn't seem to establish the jab all that well. So how's he going to get back in once Purnell gets him out at punching distance? He can either slip a punch or he has shown a jab here early in this fight. Maybe he'll abandon it, but right now he is showing a decent jab. Midway through round one. Jacob's beginning to establish some of his offense in the last 30 seconds. First minute prolonged largely to Whitaker. No hold. Work your way out. Early on, Roy, it looks like though Jacob's plan is to go to the body and try to slow Sweet Pea down. If he can keep this up, it'll be a much safer fight for him. Because once he gets a little tired and starts to stay outside, Purnell will pick him apart. Jacob also seems to be a little bit stronger of a, of a puncher than I thought he was. Yes. Box. Jacobs leaning in on Whitaker through much of the first round. Brunel stepping back, firing jab 
Jacobs an uppercut. Jacobs with a pretty good right hand gets back inside. It's a good right hook he's throwing at Whitaker. Whitaker is not used to seeing this because he hasn't fought very many southpaws. Jacobs in that exchange beating Whitaker to the punch. Stop punching. Step back. Full step. He's got to step back. Box. Lead left hand over the top again for Jacobs. But he's given Whitaker a little bit of everything to get inside here in the first round. He's also, I think, Roy, a cleverly, a clever defensive fighter. It doesn't show so much, but he is being clever about not being there to be hit. Right there you saw that if he stays outside on the end of Parnell's punches, he will get caught. More on outside, okay? Let's just box the ball a bit, okay? Look, in the inside, the guy who's really able to pay, okay? Oh, look, you can't get no punches off right now in the inside. So okay. you gotta be just going outside first, all right? And just go okay. with a good jab right now, okay? Use a good jab on the outside, step up. Now, as soon as you get inside, start shooting up a cut there, okay? Because he's down right now. You can now. try again, you understand? Nothing to tell you, you did it all, okay? Put in the voice for a better person. Trust me, you can land it. Don't forget, it's free, it's free. There you are. Jacobs was awkwardly and cleverly effective in the first round. Let's see if Purnell can solve his riddle. Maurice Lewis, the trainer, telling Jacobs he could scarcely have had a better first round, and statistically, it looks as though he's right. Jacobs landing 42% of his punches. The norm against Whitaker is below 30%. And most of this is because Jacob has stayed very, very close to Whitaker, which at, at what I told you in the beginning would be a very smart technique used by Jacob. Even though he's a southpaw, Roy, Jacobs is one of those converted southpaws. He's right-handed. Stop punching. Step back, please. And that's another reason back. I think that right hook, right hook may become a problem for Whitaker if he doesn't start blocking it. Well, and if he can establish his jab at all, then that right hook becomes a little bit more effective as a change-up behind the jab. I don't think Purnell will allow him to establish a jab, though. He's trying. Yes, and he's trying hard. Purnell shouldn't sit there and bang with him. Purnell should go back to his own game, and that is to box, hit, and not be hit. He's letting Jacob allow this to be more of a Jacobs type fight. And Jacob does not seem to have a left hand. Throws it occasionally. We saw him lead with it there. By and large, when he's thrown the left, Roy, he's been leading with it. And that's pretty smart because that would get him inside. And I think that's the only thing he really plans to do with it. Whitaker starting to get more accurate with his jab here in the second round as he tries to step back to long range and pick Jacobs apart a little bit. Like I said, if he stays outside, he can pick Jacobs apart, but he needs to stay outside, Purnell. The accurate Whitaker jab starting to bring a mouse to the right eye of Gary Jacobs. Whitaker missed with the left, crowd ood and odd. Hard right hand inside by Jacobs. Good hook by Whitaker on the way in. And this, all this outside punching that Stop Whitaker punching. lands. Stop punching! Those Watch are the most head. effective punches that uh, is being landed in this fight right now. Whitaker's outside punches. The more he lands of those, the more discouraging he'll be to Jacobs as Jacobs tries to come in. That's a push. Okay. An obvious push. Ron Lipton, the referee, rubs Whitaker's gloves. Whitaker shouldn't get upset here. I think he's kind of a little upset because Jacob pushed him down. He shouldn't get upset. Just stick to his game, and he will eventually figure Jacobs out. It's been a long time since Whitaker had a knockout in a title fight, Roy. Do you think he's hungry for one? Uh, I think he is because he seems to be sitting down his punches a little bit more here. You see how you pushed him around? Huh? 
good round, you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Be the boss, the more aggressive you are. Yeah. Controlled aggression. That was a good round again. Okay, you're very yeah. well. If you put pressure on him, you'll get tired earlier. Understand? You feel good, right? Good, fine. That's all. That's all. I think this guy in position all the time to come right back. Double up you, Jack. Double it up, baby. You don't breathe about it. Double the valve, baby. Don't get weird, baby. Stay here, Rich. Stay on the mat. Look, the inside gives me three, four punch combination, then walk around the guy. That's the same thing I want to do on the outside. I'm going to get Jack to step around. But don't forget my face, all right? If we've loved Pernell Whitaker for his perfection, you have to like Jacobs for his imperfection. He's making the most of his ability through two rounds. And he, he did one, done one thing that he said he would do, which was dictate the pace of the fight. To make Whitaker fight when Whitaker doesn't want to fight. Yeah, he believes that Burnell likes to take time off in there and get a little rest from time to time. There's that right hook again that I warned you about. Good job. Watch the elbow. Okay? Watch. Jacobs blocking Whitaker's jab and then left hook to the body. Which way up? Gary Jacobs is fighting a very smart fight here for himself. He landed and left. Whitaker countered with a left. But this is a very smart fight for Jerry Jacobs. It's hard to imagine Jacobs doing any better. Well, <laughs> I can't say doing any better, but he could do worse by staying outside and letting Whitaker dictate the pace. Absolutely. I think Jacobs is doing about as well as he can possibly do with what he's got. And he's in the fight in these first three rounds. Stop punching. Step back. Full step back. Box. The same right hook. Pernell needs to start putting his left hand up to his head when he sees Jacob come in because he doesn't need to keep getting hit with that right hook. Pernell countering inside and now fires the left cross. Stop punching! Step back! And I'm like you, I think he's very, very hungry for a knockout here. If he is in fact hungry for a knockout, might he create some opportunities to Jacobs to score? Well, he is creating opportunities for Jacobs to score, and he may find himself throwing less punch, less amount of punches than he plans to. Okay. But he's still having fun, so. Last time Brunel Whitaker scored a knockout in a title fight was five years, 15 days ago, against Juan Nazario. That was at 135 pounds. Ron Lipton warning Jacobs to watch the head. He took his cue from Brunel Whitaker on that one. An aggressive Jacob still dictating the pace. Which way up? Which way up? And Whitaker gets a left over the top. We will find out about Jacob's conditioning in this fight. We'll find out if he's telling us the truth about those miles that he was running yesterday because this will be a tiring fight, especially because they're fighting so much on the inside. Yeah, this is hard work. Very hard work. Step back. Box. Little Get rabbit punch from Jacobs. He got one to the back of Whitaker's head and gets only a warning for it. If you don't do it again, that's good. Right there is pound for pound the best ball player I ever saw, Willie Mays. Number 24, the Say Hey Kid. Announced the weights at yesterday's weigh-in and... Uh, <laughs> Now you gotta start backing them up a little bit now, okay? But let's go with both hands now, okay? Okay. All right, look. Hold up. Don't give this guy no confidence there. Okay. That's you gotta take the play away from him now. Look, you gotta out-hustle him in the inside now. Okay, he's trying to out-hustle you. Okay. Okay? I steal the confidence right away from him in this round. Come on, come on, come on. You gotta fight. Come on, come on. You gotta be, gotta be this round. Coming out. You gotta do to deal with. Don't worry about that. Ronnie Shields, who is Fidel Whitaker's trainer now, understands exactly what's going on, and he's warning Whitaker not to let Jacobs dictate to him in those close quarters. Stop punching! Step back! Step 
back clean. Jacobs there, landing 51% of his punches in round number three. Not too many at ringside would have anticipated that. And most of this is because of the inside fighting. Stop pushing. Step back. Keep him up, Gary. Boss. Larry, you mentioned Willie Mays being the best pound for pound baseball player you ever saw. You can get two for one here tonight. If you look to your left slightly, you can see the best pound for pound boxer you ever saw, too. <laughs> Where's that? <laughs> Boy Jones, bashful as always. <laughs> well, I've only seen two fighters as good at their craft as Willie Mays was at his. Sugar Ray Robinson and Muhammad Ali. Your career isn't over yet. We'll see. There were some good moments for Jacobs there while you fellows were discussing Willie Mays. <laughs> Jacobs got caught with a good right hook by Pernell Whitaker on the outside, may I add. Wipe the way out. Stop punching. Step back. I think Pernell has made up his mind that he'll go ahead and make an inside fight of this, out of this if this is what Jacob wants. If Pernell hasn't trained to the max and properly conditioned himself for a 12-round test, Jacobs might steal a round or two here because he is clearly ready to work. I'm sure Pernell has trained properly. I'm sure he's in the best of shape because he knows he has to come out and keep performing. Step, punch, step back, please. Or else that pound for pound thing will leave. Yeah, it'll be gone, won't it? And he knows that. And I think that's where we help one another in this instance. Stop holding, hold it. Stop punching. Step back, please. Okay. Stop holding, stop holding. Box. Stop punching, step back please. Hold step. Box. Crowd excited so far to see a battle. To see Gary Jacobs in the fight. Toe to toe with Cornell Whitaker and making Whitaker work for every point. I think Whitaker's punches are starting to show some effect uh, on, Jerry, on Gary Jacobs' face. I see a couple of bruise marks that I think is from good crisp punching from Pernell Whitaker. Yeah, there's a bump by the side of Jacobs' right eye that could get bigger as things go on. Pernell can target that with the jab. Stop punching, step back. World Championship Boxing returns next month with boxing's real pound for pound best part-time commentator and full-time champion Roy Jones Jr. This is a night of boxing you won't want to miss when I put my undefeated record and super middleweight title on the line against Tony Thornton. Saturday, September 30th on HBO. Pound for pound, the best fighters in the world fight here. From the horse's mouth, ladies and gentlemen, Roy Jones Jr. urging you to tune in for his own performance here on HBO, Saturday, September 30th against Tony Thornton, the punching postman, Roy. He won't be delivering any, any letters come Sunday. <laughs> Don't let him tie it up. He's tying it up on you. Okay? Okay. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's take a look at Whitaker's best punch so far right on the big nose of Gary Jacobs. There you see it again from above. But so far, Mr. Imperfect is making Mr. Perfect look less than perfect. Well, he's not really making him look less than perfect. He's just making it a rough night for Whitaker because he being a southpaw and Whitaker being a southpaw is, is enough problem. Then he's staying very close to Whitaker. I think both eyes are swelling pretty rapidly now for Jacobs as Purnell starts to target Jacobs' face. Harold Letterman, how'd you score the first three? Two, <laughs> the four. first four. I got it two rounds apiece, 38 to 38 in points. I got it even so far. I tell you, Gary Jacobs is in this fight. He's the aggressor. He, he's real good with that right hand. It's a strong right hand, giving Pete a lot of trouble on the inside. Also, he uses his elbows pretty darn good. He got that elbow in Pete's head the whole fight. And uh, Ron Lipton sees it, keeps warning him. But in any case, it's a rough fight. Gary Jacobs certainly is in it. He's very close up to now. Up came the elbow. No warning. Second warning. Second right. warning from Lipton. Box. No penalty yet. I have the fight scored the same way, Harold. I can't believe we agree. Watch your heads. This could be frustration on the part of Gary Jacobs. 
throwing the unnecessary elbows at Pernell Whitaker. Sometimes this shows that a fighter is starting to get frustrated because he can't have stuff in way. Or he could be getting fatigued, or he could start to punch his Hard right hand inside effect. by Jacobs. Or he could be thinking that he can anger and frustrate Whitaker and throw him off with such a tactic. I don't think that's his, his opinion right now. I don't think those are his immediate intentions. Okay. Work your way out. He's getting frustrated. He says Whitaker is holding him. Stop punching. Step back from him. Box. Punch that numbers through the first four rounds showed Whitaker throwing more. Jacobs landing at a higher percentage. Jacobs is trying to get in close before launching every punch. He's hitting Pernell a little bit more than we expected, but like I said before, I think it's because of this southpaw stand. Oh, good shot. Four punch combination for Whitaker. Whitaker also is doing very good body work when they're on, on the inside. One. Box. Hard left hand over the top by Purnell. Excellent counter. No hold, no hold. If I'm correct, I think Gary Jacobs may have even went right-handed just now. Stop punching. Back, back to the southpaw stance now. Hey, let him go. Brunel a little angry at himself for missing a left hand over the top and talking to himself as round five comes to a close. This is like trying to dance to grunge music. It's not very pretty. You done a lot of dancing to grunge music, Larry? Yeah, I have, isn't it? <laughs> this is the time now to take over, all right? Yeah. Before you let him get into the fight. He's not in it, right? This is the time to take over because they're going to try and jam him up. You understand? That's it. They're going to tell me I have to do something. Gary, right? step on it. Hold on, Steve. Let your shit go. When you throw that left hand over the top, bring the hook back. Okay. When you jam, turn your second shot under because he's ducking under. You got to go, baby. You got to go. Come on, it's too Three, close. Three, four punches, step around. Three, four punches, step around. Huh? Let's, Let's go. see that educated elbow as you saw it close. Jacobs threw an elbow to the chin of the champion. Let's, let's see if Jacobs' corner is right. They're going to get something else out of Whitaker in this round because they think he's a little frustrated. Round six of a scheduled 12. Whitaker was able to land a right hand as Jacobs backed away, and now here comes the Scotsman trying to get in close again. There he was right-handed again, so I was right. Watch your head. is doing very good work on the inside, especially when he throws the body shot, the short body shots. They are very effective. I think this is starting to make Gary weaken just a little. Stop punching. Step back, please. Nice and clean. Great one-two combination from Whitaker there. Landed flush. No holding it in. Right hand backs Jacobs up again. Work your way up. Jacobs showing a pretty strong chin here. Well, Purnell is not exactly gifted with punching power, Roy. Yes. I think I think between them they couldn't Stop scramble any back. eggs. Full step back. Full <laughs> step back. Watch those heads. <laughs> Jacobs getting in the hard right hand counter there. Stop punching. Step back, I go, say go. when you fight in eight Step ounce red oh. gloves, everybody can punch. Well, but not everybody can finish, can they? No, everybody can't finish. Brunel's last title fight knockout was a one punch puree of Juan Nazario. He hasn't come close to doing something like that since. As you saw on the outside just then, Pernell was able to take away with three good jabs and hit Gary with a good left hand. 
If Gary stays Stop outside, he will step. get taken apart. But step back. Not Box. getting inside with as much frequency now as was the case in the first three rounds. Work your way up, Axel. Nice and clean, both of us. People who don't understand boxing may not know what this means, but Pernell is in front of Gary Jacobs right now. He's starting to get off before Jacobs gets a chance. That's why he's being able to hit him more. With an artist like Pernell, you expect that once he's had a chance to see Jacobs' mode of operation and figure out what he's got, he can pick his spots more easily. And that's why now he's also staying out in front of Jacob. He knows where Jacob is going, so he's hitting him. Jacob has a bad bruise over his right eye right now, too. Yeah, the right eye's been swelling since early in the fight. Okay. Focus, stop holding. And it may eventually impair Gary Jacobs' vision, though I don't think that's the case so far. Go with the jab and keep throwing the hook behind the jab, all right? That's working good for you right there. Sure, now look, now this guy, he blew his nose the first three rounds now. Yeah. All right, this guy ain't got nothing else, man. This guy got nothing. All he's trying to do now huh. is he's just on a drilling for the fight for the title now. All right? He's on a yeah. drilling only now, baby. Come on now, suck it up. Let's go. I'm sorry, okay. Yeah, everything quickly. Round How zero. You feel? All right, yeah. he's down here. You're halfway there. Okay? Now listen. He fought desperately in that round to keep yourself in the fight. Now you've got to nice. keep it up. You've got to keep up the, the work rate. Three and four, Gary. Don't keep waiting for the singles. Three, four, jabs. Bump, 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 bump. Yeah. You're strong as a horse. Come on. Let me hold you with one hand. Hit him with the other. Wait. Come on, Gary. Come on. wanted a dazzle and shine in his words in this fight, but some guys don't let you dazzle and shine, Roy. The other guy has something to say about it. That's the thing about fighting these awkward number one contenders. You don't know where they come from. You don't know what they know, what they don't know. You just don't understand anything that they seem to do. Rennell Whitaker becoming more accurate with each succeeding round. And as you can see, the range is starting to open up. He's not fighting as close as he was to Jacobs early in the fight. Jacobs slowing down just a little bit. Whitaker able to use his footwork to stay ahead of Jacobs as they move around the ring. Great one two by Prentice Whitaker. Hard left hand over the top, landed for Whitaker. Jacobs showing no ill effects, comes right back in. Now you can see what I mean when I said Jacob has no left hand. He had three jabs to land in a row, but he couldn't follow up with a good left because his left hand is just not that well taught. Almost never throws it except when he leads with it. Like I said, he was just using it as an instrument to get himself closer to Whitaker. Stop punching, step back, Lee. Full step. Jacobs more and more in the position now of chasing Whitaker instead of beating him to a spot. And this is Whitaker's fight. This is the fight they should have been fighting all along. But now, I guess Whitaker probably let him wear himself down a little. Let him have his fun, and now we're just starting to catch it. Rennell's never had a knockout past the sixth round. Jacob, keep walking into this left hand. We will tonight. Step back, clean. Clean break. Box. Same left hand. More damage to the right side of Jacob's Box. face. Whitaker now beating Jacobs to the punch in virtually every exchange. Fight has markedly turned Purnell's way in these last two rounds. Because Purnell is out in front of Jacobs Stop now, and Jacobs just cannot back. catch back up. This is what you call having patience. Stop. This is what the great fighters always seem to be able to do. Have patience, let the guy do what he has to do for the first few rounds. Then you take over and you dominate the rest of the fight. This is what Purnell is doing right now. Jacobs flailing with the right to try to get in, and Purnell countering effectively with the right directly on Jacobs' chin. Stop punching. baby. Box. Work your way out. Work your way out. Protect yourself, both of you. Go ahead. Focus. Focus. Round seven coming to a close.
Now you got it, all right? Yeah. All right. You're getting a little bit lazy, Gary. And I said, you got to remember, you got to work on the bases. You're nicking the fight, but you got to work on the bases. They're not going to do you any favours. Yeah. All right. If they can nick off, yeah, they will, and therefore you've got to do the work. Okay. Get him involved with and Give him the goggle, Maurice. Can't can miss him with a right hook, Pete. Okay. Can't miss him with a right hook. Okay. Come right back with that left hand. Okay. Right? Look, pull you get close. Go with that uppercut and then bring the hook right it, back. All right? That's all. Keep busting him up with that good jab. That's good jab. He's telling the referee just now to let you fight. So when you get in there. All right? Come right back with that hook. Keep the face going at him, all right? Let's go, baby. He ain't got nothing else. Keep the face going at him, all right? Sometimes a great athlete has more problems when the bar is lowered than when it's raised. Watch your way out. Yes, and the other athletes uh, seem to be the problem. <laughs> right. Maybe the best favor we could do for Purnell this weekend was to bring Roy Jones to town and station him right here at ringside, where he can serve as a constant reminder to Whitaker what his central motivation is. That designation as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Harold Letterman, how'd you have it score? Jim, 68, 65, five rounds to two, Colonel Whitaker. Jim, I agree with you. I think that he's just dominating this fight since about the third round. I mean, Gary Jacobs comes in with that right jab, lunges forward, and gets nailed with a real good left hand, a good right hook. Pete's landing the cleanest shot for shots, but I want to tell you, the dude was a terrified of the officials. Three judges from outside the United States, you never know, they could be looking at the draw. Both of you, no hope. Three judges from outside the Continental 48. Harold, one of the three is from Hawaii. All right, I'll go along with that. <laughs> All right, you must. <laughs> Whitaker tripled up on Jacobs in power shots in round seven. He landed 18 power punches to six for Jacobs. Jacobs has slowed down a, a considerable amount. Um, now he can't land the punches he was landing earlier. Whitaker's body shots are starting to have a, a decent amount of effect on him, I think. And Jacobs, who was able to get to Whitaker's body in the first couple of rounds, has been headhunting for the past three or four. Taking hard punches like that for his trouble. Stop pushing! Head hunting is usually another symptom of frustration setting in. Whitaker taking his time here in round number eight. Jacob's coming in without punching, and you leave yourself open for stuff like that. shortage of heart for Gary Jacobs but the skill gap has been increasingly a factor in the fight Work your way out. you're locked up stop punching. experience will, will start to set in here a little too when a guy as experienced as Pernell stop in punching. championship fight gets comfortable at this pace of the fight everything starts to go his way as you can see Gary can't even land a punch Now you're doing it, baby. Now you're doing it. What I want you to do. What I want you to do. Let the boys with this guy a little bit, all right? Go ahead and boys with him. Go ahead and clown with him. But look, in the center of the ring, not on the rope, okay? Here's the punch okay. that number profile of the first four rounds of the fight versus the second four rounds of the fight. Okay? And you'll see that in the first four rounds, Jacobs was quite competitive, throwing a similar number of punches and landing at a higher percentage than Whitaker. Now go down to rounds five through eight. Whitaker's percentage goes up, Jacobs' percentage goes down, as does his punch output. Those rounds belong entirely to Sweet Pea Whitaker. Let's go out there and fight like the winner, son. Fight Come on like out. the winner. Go out and do it. You can, Gary, save everybody and yourself a lot of aggravation. Right, don't worry. Go out and take it, gumshoe. <laughs> Round nine begins by punch stat numbers. Gary Jacobs was able to land only six 
of 39 it. punches in the eighth. Got to stop holding. Or someone's gonna lose a point. Box. The corner told Jacob to go in and fight like a winner, but it's very hard to fight like a winner when you're in there against one of the best winners of all time. I don't know what it means even. Well, fight like a winner. You got to give a guy some clue about what to do. That's a little bit more focused than just say fight like a winner. You got a point there. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're out of uh, ideas. ideas. <laughs> fight like a winner. Now you figure out how. Any thoughts on this referee, Roy, Ron Lipton? We haven't seen him at this level before. Well, uh, he's doing a pretty good job right now. He uh, didn't let them fight much on the inside at first, but I think he got some instructions from somewhere to let them fight more on the inside. So I say he's doing a real good uh, job for his first time. In my eyes. Uh, I think Larry Hazard, the New Jersey commissioner, at one point suggested to the referee to let him fight a little bit more on the inside. Harry Jacobs with a chance here to make a statement as Whitaker waits in the corner, but Burnell loves to showboat in this situation and demonstrate his defensive skills, and he got away with one there. See, people don't understand that when you showboat like this, it just gives you confidence, it just helps you get more into what you're doing, and it makes the fight much, much more fun for us than as to other athletes. So Such he's entertaining kid. himself. Yes. Ready, come on. And staying motivated for the last three rounds of the fight. That's right, because it's very hard sometimes to stay motivated when you fight a guy such as Gary Jacob. Uh, Pernell says, what am I going to do with this guy? He's like, he's like a camel. You don't know where to sit on him. <laughs> Sit on the hump, you got a better view. <laughs> That's the punch you should be using right there. Now notice Jacob is on the outside now. He's not trying hard to get in like he was earlier. Right, he doesn't have a chance out here. Right. Brunel Whitaker from the outside can school Gary Jacobs. That's what he's doing. Stop pushing. Step back. Nine rounds down, and it's not getting any better for Scotsman Gary Jacobs against Sweet D. Whitaker. That's the way you win rounds. That's and the, the natives the are restless. Head back. Close your eyes. That's it. That's the discipline that's going to win this fight. All right. Gary, Gary, please. Please. You've got a three-round fight. A three-round fight which can change the course of your life. Okay? Yeah. All right? Now go you and do it. Give him a goggle. Wait, Gargo, don't spit out. Let me get the, the bucket. He's walking right in. You can't miss this guy with combination. Straight punches. We ain't got to do nothing fancy with this guy. Okay. As soon as it get close, go with the hooks. Okay. The hooks are right there all day long. You're fine. All right? Let's go on the ground. What you did the last round. You understand? Right He's going to be a bit right different. All right. right. Really right. Please. That was the first time I seen Whitaker get hit with that hook in a couple of rounds now. And that's very good because he did start to defend against it. Stop I saw him catch it on his gloves a couple of times. And those are the type of adjustments that true champions know how to make during the course of a fight. Stop punching! Step back! You heard Ronnie Shields telling Whitaker to wait for Jacobs to walk in and then hit him with hooks. Whitaker content now to stand away from Jacobs and simply pop him with the jab over and over. Keep him up, Gary! Stop punching! Keep him up! Us. Jacobs with enough energy left to punch his way in again. Go up the back of his head, Gary. Work your way out. Being right-handed, I can imagine that Gary Jacob has a very hard step right punch, jab. Step back, please. No punching on the break. Let me get out. Box. Come on. 
Work your way out. Your hands are free. Fight your way out. Well, he's clearly one of those natural right-handers who expects that fighting as a southpaw will maximize the effect of his jab and his hook. Yeah, but it's very hard to get your shoulder cocked no to throw a power back. shot when your Fox, shoulder is already clean. forward at your opponent. He get off his kidney. Michael Moore is a natural right-hander who fights southpaw. De La Hoya is a natural southpaw who fights right-handed. Both have developed power hands, though. Uh, Michael Moore has a very good straight left, even though he's right-handed. And De La Hoya can throw the right cross. Right. And this guy has not developed his left hand. At all. So he's like a one-handed fighter with the front, with the powerful hand being in front. And there's a hard right hand from Jacobs that backs Whitaker up into the ropes. Yes, but he also ate a left hand. Whitaker lashing back. Another hard left hand for Brunel. He's been able to land his left cross consistently for the last seven rounds. Stop. I'm telling you to keep off the back of his head, okay? Let's go! Box! Hard work with the right hand there by Gary Jacobs, keeping himself mentally in the fight. advantage of Jacobs rushing in. Coming up immediately following tonight's coverage of World Championship Boxing, stay tuned for First Degree on the East Coast and the Tuskegee Airmen on the West Coast. HBO original movie production of the Tuskegee Airmen starring Larry Fishburne, First Degree with Rob Lowe. Prince like you want to work this fucking guy. You understand? Yeah. He's standing between you and everything. Gary, you're going to fucking hold Yeah, you. but you've got nothing to lose. Free yourself. Come on. Come on. Free yourself. All right? Listen, I could have taken a point away, but I didn't. Stop all right, all right, all right. Keep it clean. Okay. All right? How about you? All right, come on, baby. Let's go. Right, no, let's work. Come on. Let it drown, baby. Let it drown. Right. Both hands moving. Keep the hand moving. Both hands. Come Keep trying to put the door over here. Step back. Take a look at an exchange here. A right hand, a right hook by Jacobs, followed by a left hook by Whitaker. Work your way out. And Jacobs' right was one of his best punches Stop since punch. early in the fight. And you heard Mickey Duff pleading with his fighters to come up with something new that'll change his life. Harold Letterman, how'd you score the first 10? Jim, 97-93, no oh. seven rounds to three, Pernell Whitaker. Yeah, no I think he's landing a clean of harder shots. Gary Jacobs is rushing in with that right hand, landing an occasional good right hand. Once in a while, a left, he's got a very poor left hand. But for, for the better part, it's all Pernell Whitaker. It's a fun. And they're calling it a knockdown. Three consecutive title defenses, or three consecutive title fights, I should say, in which Brunel Whitaker has been knocked down. Knocked down by Buddy McGirt at this weight. Knocked down at 154 pounds by Julio Cesar Vasquez. And now Gary Jacobs is credited with an 11th round knockdown of Brunel Whitaker here. Well, I think the referee really didn't know what had happened. And when he saw Whitaker hit the canvas, I think this gave him an indication that maybe Whitaker was mad at himself for getting knocked down. If Whitaker didn't get knocked down, I think it was a slip. I think he was thrown and slipped. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I didn't see any punch that looked like a knockdown punch. Well, it's Rashomon here. We've got three different versions, right? Right. I say throw and slip. Roy says slip. And you say who knows? replay will tell all Stop. but it won't it'll Stop. still count as a knockdown no matter what the replay shows fifth time in Brunel Whitaker's career that he's been knocked to the canvas Rafael Williams, Roger Stop. Mayweather, Buddy Stop. McGirt, Julio Cesar Vasquez and now Gary Jacobs but he doesn't stay down oh he hurt Jacobs in. Oh, no. What's good for the
the goose is good for the gander, so down goes Jacobs. If we did and here's a very a bad cut now. Yep. Jacobs eye over Jacobs eyelid, right eyelid, but it isn't bleeding. Oh, and Cornell is able to target the right eye again with that roundhouse left. Jacob is very weak now. Pernell can knock him out if he catches with a good clean left hand. But he has to time it. Jacobs appears to have given just about all he's got. Next to last round here. Take a look at that alleged knockdown. Let's see what happens. Nothing happened. It was a right to the to the rib, to the high rib. And it was a kind of a push and a half punch. It certainly was not a knockdown. He was off balance because he missed with a big power shot. Right. It will count as a knockdown. It wasn't a knockdown. Yeah. Come on. Come on, look. Give me a little okay, little. All right, let's go. Come on, let's go out there and put big hands on this boy. All right. Relax, don't take no chances. Fight the way you want to fight. Understand? But don't take don't no chances. You. Well, you want to stay well, come, come on, man. Come on. 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 Come Lipton holds the fighters apart, and now round 12 begins. One thing I also like about Pernell Whitaker, even though he didn't get knocked down in that round, was besides him, he is him, Larry Holmes, Felix Trinidad, maybe the best three fighters that I've ever seen at coming back from a knockdown. Felix Trinidad, a hard-punching welterweight star. Ike Corte is another one in that division. You hope. You sincerely hope that before Cornell Whitaker finishes his career, we'll get a chance to see him in the ring with Forte and Trinidad. Both these will be very good fighters. Both fighters are very good fighters. Both will make Cornell, will bring out the best in Cornell, and this is what people like he and myself like to see. Both have the punching power to raise questions about Whitaker's chin. Yeah, but those big punches usually get caught up on trying to get to Whitaker's chin, and they never hit him. Whitaker seems interested, at least, in doing as much damage as he can do Stop here in the 12th round. He's Jacob's being, holding on. He is being Gary's body to where Gary's really weak now. Let him go. Break! himself out early with his own style of fighting. Whitaker stepped back, had the patience, let him wear himself down, then now he's taking him to school. So it's one thing to run four minute miles, but yet another to go Stop 12 punching. rounds with a fighter the caliber Stop. of Whitaker. Hold it! Box. As they say, this ain't no track meet. It's a swap meet. Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> They were swapping fairly evenly early, and now Lipton takes a point away from Gary Jacobs for holding and hitting. Which is not really effective because he's taken a very good school lesson today, and he will be taking it for the rest of this fight. Well, so. that, that makes up for the no knockdown knockdown. Right? We're even. Yeah. Whitaker pounding away as the fight comes to a close. Crowd cheering as though it would have liked to have seen 12 rounds of this. But Cornell had to soften Gary Jacobs up for a while. Oh, there you go. It became possible. I told you.
of these rules. So Whitaker could still go for the knockout right there at the end. But Jacobs got up before the count of 10. And that becomes a three-point round for Pernell Whitaker. Two points for those knockdowns. One point taken away from the challenger. Okay. Rennell Whitaker treating his fans to a display of punching power to punctuate this 12-round performance against Gary Jacobs. And I think Whitaker enjoyed that there at the end. I think he did too because people have been questioning his punching power lately and he wanted to show that he still possessed some knockout power. He wanted to show you. He turned around and looked directly at you as soon as he got Jacobs onto the canvas. Well, like I said, we are one another's inspiration right now. We make one another want to desire to be the best that we can be. And that helped Pernell out, and it will help me come September 30th when I stop all mail delivery by knocking out the postman. The punching postman Tony Thornton against Roy Jones here on HBO the evening of September 30th. Too bad you won't be able to do commentary while you fight it. Well, I can help you out a little. Just watch my mouth every now and then. Okay. I'll do the lip reading. Larry Merchant has gone into the ring to get ready for post-fight interviews. So, Roy, let's go through these replays. There this is where Whitaker hurts him. A counter left hand over the top of his jab, which had Whitaker had been landing all night. Boom. There's the left hand. I told you if Gary kept walking into the left hand, he would there would be a knockdown or a knockout. He walked he walked right into it and he got knocked down. Now Boom. here's the second knockdown. And frankly, Lipton could have stopped it to protect Gary Jacobs from further punishment at any time. Yeah, because Whitaker was hitting him with some very clean power shots. And right there you can see it's just follow-up work, which is the way you're supposed to finish a guy. I'm sure as a matter of pride that Jacobs wanted to finish the fight, but Lipton certainly wouldn't have been beyond his he best judgment if he had gone ahead and effected a stoppage there and given Purnell a 12th round KO. And now let's go up to the ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars on this decision. going to have a brief delay as there is apparently a commission problem. Could be that some of the judges uh, were confused by the ending about and wondering whether Lipton did in fact rule a KO. Gary Jacobs. Terrific guy. We really enjoyed talking with him yesterday. Very nice guy. Something that you rarely see in boxing nowadays. Oh, come on. <laughs> They're everywhere, Roy. Yeah, they are. And here's Brunel basking in some appreciation from his fans. Mickey Duff. Talking with Larry Hazard of the commission. Duff is the manager of Gary Jacobs, and obviously he feels as though he has an argument to mount here. Hey, Mickey. I watched Purnell Whitaker walk the boardwalk for about 45 minutes yesterday, Roy, and only a few people wandered up to say hello. He, he has never gone hard for the celebrity aspect of this. He thinks of himself simply as a professional fighter not necessarily a celebrity or a star. Final punch stat numbers. And you can see that Brunel got himself up to 45% as a connect percentage in the fight. Jacobs, who was close to 50% for the first four rounds, winds up down at 38%. Jabs and Brunel dominated this category, throwing 75 more jabs and landing 53 more than Gary Jacobs. And now, Michael Buffer is ready for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, we go to the scorecards. Gus Mercurio scores the bout 118 to 109. Tomatsu Tamihara scores the bout 118 to 107. And Takeaki Kanaya scores it 117 to 109 for the winner by unanimous decision. And still, welterweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweet Pea. Whitaker. Jorge Castro.